Shastra, Sastra IAST, Sastra, IPA, A Street, R is a Sanskrit word that means, "...precept, rules, manual, compendium, book or treatise", in a general sense. The word is generally used as a suffix in the Indian literature context, for technical or specialized knowledge in a defined area of practice. Shastra has a similar meaning to English logi, e.g., ecology, psychology, meaning scientific and basic knowledge on particular subject. Examples in terms of modern neologisms include Bhautikashastra, physics, Rasayanashastra, chemistry, Jivashastra, biology, Vastashastra. Architectural science, Shilpashastra, science of mechanical arts and sculpture, Arthashastra, science of politics, economics, and Nitashastra, compendium of ethics or right policy. In Western literature, Shastra is sometimes spelled as Sastra. Topic etymology: Shastra commonly refers to a treatise or text on a specific field of knowledge. In early Vedic literature, the word referred to any precept, rule, teaching, ritual instruction or direction. In late and post-Vedic literature of Hinduism, Shastra referred to any treatise, book or instrument of teaching, any manual or compendium on any subject in any field of knowledge, including religious. It is often a suffix, added to the subject of the treatise, such as Yoga Shastra, Nyaya Shastra, Dharma Shastra, Koka or Kama Shastra, Moksha Shastra, Artha Shastra, Alamkara Shastra rhetoric, Kavya Shastra poetics, Sangeeta Shastra music, Natya Shastra theater and, dance and others. In Buddhism, a Shastra is often a commentary written at a later date to explain an earlier scripture or sutra. For example, Yutang Lin says that a text written by him and not given by Buddha, cannot be called a sutra, it is called a sastra. In Buddhism, Buddhists are allowed to offer their theses as long as they are consistent with the sutras, and those are called sastras. In Jainism, the term means the same as in Hinduism. An example of Jaina Shastra is the 12th century Yoga Shastra of Hemchandracharya. Shastra is sometimes the root of compounded Sanskrit words. A custodian of Shastra, for example, is called Shastradari Sanskrit. Shastradari. References in the early texts The term is found in several passages of the Rigveda 2nd millennium BCE, such as in hymn 8.33.16. In this Rigvedic verse, the term means rule or instruction. The Maitri Upanishad mid to late 1st millennium BCE, similarly, mentions the materialist Charvakas and Brihaspati who disagreed that the Vedas are a treatise of knowledge, proposing relativism instead, in the following passage The term is found in other Upanishads as well as in Bhagavad Gita such as in verses 15.20, 16.23–16.24, .16 and 17.1. The Rigveda Pratisakya 11.36, 14.30 uses the term Shastra to refer to the Pratisakya tradition. Katyayana, Patanjali and Panini's Astadayi use the term. Similarly, the Vedangajyotisa uses the term to refer to astronomical treatises. The term Vedangasastranam, refers to the Sastra of the Vedangas. The term, Sastra, is found in Yaskas Nirukta, 1 14, where the reference is to Nirukta. Etymology. An early use of the term Sastra with reference to the literature on Dharma is found in the Vartika of Katyayana, who uses the expression Dharmasastra. <laughs> Chronology and authenticity Shastras are predominantly post-Vedic literature, that is after about 500 BCE. However, it is unclear when various shastras were composed and completed. The authenticity of the manuscripts is also unclear, as many versions of the same text exist, some with major differences. Patrick Olivelle, credited with a 2005 translation of Manu Dharma Sastra, published by the Oxford University Press, states the concerns in postmodern scholarship about the presumed authenticity and reliability of manuscripts as follows Abridged, The MDH was the first Indian legal text introduced to the Western world through the translation of Sir William Jones in 1794. All the editions of the MDH, except for Jollies, reproduce the text as found in the Calcutta manuscript containing the commentary of Kulika. I have called this as the Vulgate version. 
It was Kulika's version that has been translated repeatedly. Jones, 1794; Burnell, 1884; Buhler, 1886; and Doniger, 1991. The belief in the authenticity of Kulika's text was openly articulated by Burnell, 1884; XXIX. There is then no doubt that the Textus Receptus, viz., that of Kulika Bhatta, as adopted in India and by European scholars, is very near on the whole to the original text. This is far from the truth. Indeed, one of the great surprises of my editorial work has been to discover how few of the over fifty manuscripts that I collated actually follow the Vulgate in key readings. The literature of late 1st millennium BCE such as Arthashastra, and Shastras of various fields of knowledge from the early 1st millennium period is of great interest as it helped the emergence of diverse schools and the spread of Indian religions such as Hinduism and Buddhism in and outside South Asia. The Shastras are both descriptive and prescriptive. Among the various shastras, Manu's code of law has been among the most studied as the colonial British government attempted to establish different laws in British India based on sharia for Muslims and Manu's code of law for all non-Muslims. The shastras are not consistent or a single consensus documents. Dharma shastras, for example, contain opposing views and contradictory theories. This is in part because they represent an ideal of human behavior while at the same time recognizing the need to account for likely failings. The Shastras do not present life as it was lived. Rather they reveal an idea of what life should be, seen from a Brahmin perspective. The Shastra texts constitute one of the great bodies of literature of the ancient world. <laughs> Sutra Sutras are another genre of Indian texts that emerged in the 1st millennium BCE, particularly after the 600 BCE. Sutra literally, binding thread", denotes a distinct type of literary composition from Shastra. In Sanskrit, sutra typically referred to one or more aphorisms, hence sutras use short, aphoristic, evocative statements. In contrast, a Shastra is typically longer, with more detail and explanations. An example of a sutra is Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, considered a classic Hindu treatise, while an example of Shastra is Himachandra's Yoga Sastra, considered a classic Svetambara Jain treatise. Both on yoga, shastras and sutras are among the numerous other genres of literature that has survived from ancient and medieval India. Other genres include Vedas, Upanishads, Vedangas, Itihasa, Puranas, Basias, and Subhashitas. Equals <laughs> equals see also.